In this video I'm going to show you how we can do a two-group mean comparison test, otherwise known as a t-test. It's a test that's used when um, you have a dependent variable that is interval in nature. So for example, income, GPA, and so on. Um, and then you have a dependent variable that is consists of two groups. So you might use this if you wanted to know whether men and women differ in their average GPAs on a college campus, for example. Um, and so let's go ahead and get started. I'm using the Social Capital Community Benchmark Survey. What I've done though is actually pull out a subsample of just 1,000 respondents. That way not everything is statistically significant necessarily and so on. So um, first thing you need is a dependent interval variable. And that's what I've got. So when code book social trust. It's a measure of social trust. Higher value of social trust means they're more trusting. It's a composite of a number of ordinal variables, but once combined into a composite index that it takes on interval qualities. And then, of course, you need a um, grouping variable that consists of two groups. And I went ahead and identified this variable. Religion is, a very, import is very important in my life. What I wanted to do is separate out people who agreed strongly with that statement and compare them to everybody who did not say strongly. Okay? So I created a variable called Perry Lig. Okay? And as a null hypothesis, I would say that there is no significant difference in um, the average level of social trust among the very religious and the not very religious. Okay? That's my null hypothesis, is that there's no difference. Alternative hypothesis um, is that there is, in fact, a difference. And I could specify a particular direction, saying that very religious people are going to have higher levels of social trust or lower levels of social trust. Um, but for now, I'm just going to stick with a, um, a blanket alternative hypothesis that there is a significant difference in the mean social trust of those two groups. Okay? So, what you need to do to get started is go to statistics, summaries, tables, and tests, classical tests of hypotheses, and go ahead and find the two-group mean comparison test. I know a lot of these look very similar. There's a lot of um, similar tests. This is the one you're going to use most often. And then the variable name is our de dependent variable, or interval variable, so social trust. And then our group variable name, variable leg. You go ahead and hit OK. And what's nice is, look how simple that command structure is. You, can, you wouldn't have to go through the menu system to run this. t-test, your dependent variable, comma, by, and then in parentheses, your grouping variable. Very simple. Okay? And what we see here is here's the mean level of social trust of people who are less than strongly agree of that um, um, statement. And then here are our self, our identified strongly religious people, how I measured them, and that their mean, and the difference between them. And, of course, the t-test goes through, finds this difference, takes that difference, divides it by the standard error to get a t-statistic, and then assesses to, uh, what's the probability of getting a t-statistic of that size, um, given our sample size. And it tells me that there is less than a 0.05 chance that I would get a difference of that size by chance due, due to a fluke sample. So I can be rather confident that in fact there is a difference between the self-identified self strongly um, religious versus the less than strongly religious people. Okay. Now it may not be exactly that difference, but we can be 95% confident that the difference falls in that range. Okay. So it's a it's a pretty simple test. And if I had looked at if I had specified, and notice we have. Three uh, here's the null hypothesis, that the difference between the two groups is zero. There's no difference in the means. Okay, And we can only reject that null hypothesis if, in fact, we're more than 95% confident that there is a difference. Okay, um, And by default, you typically just want to look at your alternative hypothesis in the middle here. Um, this is what we call a two-tailed test, where the difference and explanation point means not. So the difference is not equal to zero. And it doesn't say which group should be um, more trusting or less trusting or anything like that. It just says that the difference between the two groups is not equal to zero. Um, and that gives us a p-value of 0 0.0168. Now, if I had said that 
the strongly religious should be um, more trusting, which in fact that appears to be the case, then because they're the second group in this particular case, I would expect this to be negative. So I know I would have to say that the difference should be less than zero. So a lot depends on which group is first and second because it simply takes this value and then subtracts this value to get the difference. So take that into account. And if that would have been my, my alternative hypothesis, that the strongly, strongly religious are going to be more um, trusting, then I could have gone to a one-tailed test of significance, and I would have gotten a p-value of this. And you'll notice, actually, this is just the p-value of the two-tailed test divided by two. Okay. Um, but typically, the standard is for people just to stick with a two-tailed test and just use the p-value in the middle. It's a much more conservative test. Okay. Um, now, we just went ahead and jumped right in and dip, conducted a t-test, but the t-test does actually come with some assumptions about your data. And if you violate those assumptions, um, it may not be appropriate to actually run a t-test. Um, there's three um, basic assumptions. The first is that your dependent variable is normally distributed. Um, takes on the, the distribution of a bell curve or a normal curve. And here we can just do a quick histogram to see um, if source trust looks at all normal. And while it does kind of start to take on um, something of a, a normal curve shape, we can clearly see that it's skewed and possibly suffering from kurtosis. So a more formal test would be that SK test. And again, we can see that, in fact, as the histogram showed, we're suffering from skewness and kurtosis. Now, there are commands that allow you to transform a variable to become more normal, um, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Um, this is one of those assumptions that we can that is often violated routinely, um, particularly if you have a large sample size. And we have a relatively decent sample size here with a thousand. So we're going to go on to the second assumption, which is that we have equal group sizes, number of observations in each group. And we can see that we don't, 391 versus 605. Okay, So we already know that we kind of violated that, and you can sort of um, um, assess, eyeball, whether you, you're violating that assumption. But again, if you have a relatively large sample size, you can violate that assumption. But you have to be cognizant of it. The final one is that the two groups should have very similar variances on your dependent variable. And actually when we're looking at our t-test results, we can it reports the standard deviation. And we can see that they're actually quite similar, 0.665 to 0.642 or so. Um, there is a more formal test that if you wanted to check whether the variances are similar, you can go to statistics, summary tables and tests, classical test of hypotheses, and the two-group variance comparison test. Okay. And it's the same thing, social trust, again, very relig, and hit OK. And basically what this shows gives us an F statistic, and you can see that we can't reject the null hypothesis, which basically just does a ratio of the standard deviation of one group to, to the other, and that ratio should equal 1 if they're equal. And in this case, we can't reject that because our p-value there would be 0.42. That's not a strong basis for rejection. Um, so we have equal variances. You may not, but let's say you do have unequal variances. This is one of those issues where there is an option in the t-test um, that you can correct for that. So you can go back to your two-group mean comparison test. And all you'd have to do is check your unequal variances, and it'll adjust for unequal variances. Um, again, because ours weren't unequal, it really is not going to change much in our result. Okay. So of the three um, assumptions, this is the one you can sort of adjust for. The others, there's not much you can do. Um, but if you're concerned at all, and maybe you have a small sample size and you're violating these assumptions, um, again, the t-test is robust against those violations of assumptions, but if you're concerned, what you can do is run the non-parametric test alternative. Okay? And the non-parametric test 
in this particular case is the Wilcoxon rank sum test, or the Mayo Whitney test. And this isn't as powerful as the t-test, but it doesn't have all of the same assumptions. And so I often use it as a backup to the t-test if I violated some assumptions. And sometimes I'll report the results of both the t-test and the rank sum, um, just to satisfy various audiences, because not everybody will agree whether you need to do it or not. So let's say I violated some assumptions, for example, with the equal group size, um, and of course with the dependent variable being not normal. Um, so to run the Wilcoxon rank sum test, you'd go to statistics, non-parametric test of all, non-parametric test of hypotheses, and scroll down to this interesting list of names and find the Wilcoxon rank sum test. Type in your dependent variable, your grouping variable, in this case Barry Lig, and OK. And this is a very different kind of test. Um, it basically orders every respondent um, from the um, least to the highest and then gives them uh, a rank and then sums those ranks up. And what they're basically doing is um, comparing the actual observed some rank sums to what you would expect just by chance. And these expectations are obviously going to vary depending on the observation size um, for each group. And then it assesses whether the difference between the rank sum and the expected for those groups are um, significantly different than what you would expect due to a chance sample. Um, and you get this um, Z value down here and then the P value for that. And again, um, what this is confirming, and typically it will confirm what the t-test found, is that there is a significant difference between the two groups. But some occasionally you might find that your uh, Wilcoxon rank sum man whitney test does not confirm or does not um, come to the same conclusion as your t-test. And if you violated assumptions, it's best to go with the most conservative assessment. In this case, I'm actually in agreement here that um, there is a significant difference between the two groups. And as my t-test showed, my strongly religious people have a higher average mean level of social trust than the non-very religious people. Okay. Um, hope that's helpful.